conferences. Thanks for hearing from me. I've researched the issue of fluoridation for 14 years. It's been the most frustrating effort in my life to try to stop this practice, which I think is a huge betrayal of the public trust, both by the U.S. Public Health Services and Department of Health and Human Services, and all the cogs in the wheel down to the local health districts. Um, there were two moments really recently where fluoridation should have stopped. One was when the Center of Disease Control admitted that the major benefits of fluoride are topical. It works from the outside of the tooth, not from inside the body. At this point, adding fluoride to the water didn't make sense at all because you expose every tissue in the body. If you want to apply it directly to the teeth, then use fluoridated toothpaste. Unfortunately, this, the CDC and other promoters did not take advantage of that situation. Also, if you apply it to the surface, you don't force it on people that don't want it. And you've already heard from many citizens in Austin that they do not want to be medicated in this way. This is the only time we've used the public water supply to deliver medicine for obvious reasons. Once you put it in the water, you can't control the dose and you can't control who gets it. There's no medical supervision oversight. Also, to make matters worse, the chemicals used are not pharmaceutical grade. They're industrial waste products from the phosphate fertilizer industry. Uh, the second time when this practice should have ended is when the, the National Research Council re produced this 507-page report with 1,100 references suggesting to the EPA that they lower the safe drinking water standard. After four and a half years, the EPA has not done that, which indicates to you the politics is operating here. Now, we've, we've, we've taken all these arguments, three scientists, myself, James Beck, and Spedding Micklem, have written a whole book indicating that the science does not support the effectiveness of fluoridation, and there are very many health concerns. And basically, there is no adequate margin of safety between the levels which are causing harm, as documented in this National Research Council report, and the doses that people are likely to get nowhere near an adequate margin of safety. But one of those studies indicates from China that IQ in children had lowered to 1.9 parts per million. And this is one of my major concerns, that the level of fluoride in mother's milk is incredibly low, 0 0.004 parts per million, which means a bottle-fed child in Austin is getting 250 times more fluoride than nature intended. What is particularly serious about that is that the, at birth, the baby's blood-brain barrier is not fully formed, which means that fluoride can enter the brain. We've now got 100 animal studies which shows that fluoride can damage the brain. They acknowledge this, and we now have 23 studies which indicate that fluoride lowers IQ in children. What I hope uh, that you sir, can that do was is... Your, that was your time. Last, last, if I can finish the sentence, Mr. Mayor. What I would request from you is that you find somebody, either in the U.S. government or in your health department, who can respond scientifically to this book. Thank, Thank you. you. Agrees that the fluoride iron uh, toughens the enamel. It makes the enamel harder and makes that enamel more resistant to acid attack from sugar, which is broken down by bacteria in the mouth. Now, the key thing is this, that the, as I said earlier, the CDC admitted in 1999 that the predominant benefit, the way that fluoride worked, was topical, not systemic. In other words, it works on the outside of the tooth surface by this mechanism, not from inside the body. And the moment that they admitted that, if you move the whole rationale for putting fluoride in the water, which is meant, you're meant to swallow, and removed the rationale for forcing this on people that don't want it. It's, it's the height of arrogance for government bodies to force citizens to take a medicine if they don't want it, especially if they can't demonstrate overwhelming effectiveness and long-term safety studies. In short, fluoridation is unusual, unethical, unnatural, unnecessary, unsafe, ineffective, and there are better alternatives of, of, of ways of fighting tooth decay in low-income children. I'll go through these one at a time. It's unusual. Most countries in the world do not fluoridate their water, including 97% of Europe. It's unethical. We should never use the public water supply to deliver medication, for obvious reasons. 
once the fluoride or medicine is put in the water, you can't control the dose, you can't control who it goes to, and you're violating the individual's right to inform consent to medication. It's unnatural. If you look at the level of fluoride in mother's milk, baby's first meal, there's very little there. The concentration is extremely low, 0.004 parts per million. This means that a bottle-fed baby in a fluoridated community like Dallas is getting about 200 times more fluoride than nature intended. That is reckless in my view. It's unnecessary. Fluoride is not a nutrient. There's not one single process in the body that needs fluoride. And most people now agree that if it works at all, it works topically. It's um, unsafe.